Hello and welcome. Today I'm in the tier 8 US destroyer the Benson. This is a match on the map Trap. I am in a division with a Tashkent and it's a fairly recent one. Um, I asked my team if they were okay with us focusing on the A and B caps because well I got an A spawn and so did actually some of the other ships on my team and nobody seemed to say anything about it so I guess they accepted it because many of the ships are heading towards the A and B caps. Except those two at the top that are heading towards C for god knows what reason. Anyways, um, we're not meeting, at least it doesn't appear that we will be meeting any resistance in the A cap, although we might have, you know, they might still be behind that island, but they probably would have already arrived or at least would be incredibly close so that somebody would spot something. So it seems that we will get the A-cap uncontested, or maybe it'll be like one or two ships but that were really slow. Um, I don't really like fighting in the A-cap because this pulls many ships over, especially the friendly ones. And it's a bad thing because, well, we really should be fighting over the B-cap, not the A-cap, because the B-cap is the more important one. It's the one in the center. So if you control the B-cap, you can assess the situation and decide to attack the side which is easier like the a cap or the c cap depending on how many ships there are so having control of b is rather important especially because it's like straight in the middle and the islands block the path from certain directions so you can know if there's anybody in it or not so i spot this mutski and obviously i'm gonna fight it because it's a mutski so i do have to be careful though i don't want to be suddenly surprised by the torpedoes. Uh, the B hull on the Benson has a 4 second uh, rudder shift time so that could be a bit of a problem. The C hull is better by the way, it's like 2.8 or something, or 2.7, I'm not certain. One or the other. Fortunately for me, um, the Mitski used smokescreen and stopped spotting me so she is hiding. I still want to go towards her but uh, I hope that she, you know, left smokescreen so that I can shell the Atlanta that's inside the cap zone. I say it's fortunate because uh, there was a cruiser that was also shooting me from the side and uh, because it disappeared I wasn't spotted anymore. But right now the focus is definitely on the Atlanta. I sure as hell hope the Mitski does not come around. I'm gonna try torpedoing the Atlanta because I think she will be just heading out of the cap zone because otherwise she will just be focus fired by all the ships and I think that'll include me. I also hope that the Atlanta does not have radar. Because I, I believe this was after the patch that the Atlanta was given radar, so... I sure hope she doesn't have it. Or was that patch not in yet? I'm not sure, I don't know. I think she should have radar because that's what I thought at the time. I was worried about it. Like that she could have, but it doesn't necessarily mean that she does have. It seems my torpedoes aren't gonna hit, but wow, look at that damage! A thousand damage that salvo, two thousand damage the next one, another thousand damage. Benson damage is crazy. Anyways, um, I got the... Um, I got the Atlanta kill. I spotted the Mitski again, but I immediately used the smoke my own smoke screen because... Uh, well, I would like to finish the cap first. You know, I think it's more important than chasing down that Mitski, especially because there is a Tirpitz at uh, 9 kilometers, so that one could be scary. I'm gonna just keep shelling him. Like, I'm gonna get all the fires in the world on this guy going and force him to leave because he would be insane to stay here if he just gets shelled like this. I don't know what it is, but it seems like USDD guns just deal so much damage. Like, I, I don't mean the fact that um, they shell a lot. Yes, they do, but uh, they seem to deal damage more often than my Soviet ones. Like, the damage might be a bit lower, but the amount of, the amount of times the HE seems to deal damage is pretty high. And that's actually very surprising for me. And that's why I really like USDDs. Like, I, I, I. Once I got past the Mahan, well, actually, Mahan included because the Mahan has uh, 9.2 kilometer torpedoes. Once I got past the Faragut, then I guess. Playing them has been an absolute joy. 
like these DDs are just really good. But of course, one of the reasons is because I have a 15 point captain, so that, that makes up for a lot of the issues you would have with her. Although I did get it on the Benson finally. But like, having all these things like, um, what's it called, uh, survivability expert and stuff like that just feels so great. Al although, let's be honest, it would be okay if you had like, um, uh, a demolition expert as well, but I, I really prefer to uh, survivability expert because it just just seems to increase my survivability by such a huge amount. Like if I didn't have survivability expert right now, I would be at uh, 9500 HP instead of 12800. I would definitely be a lot more um, conservative in what I'm gonna do. But anyways, in terms of the plan, we have control of A and B, we are also in position to defend B. I asked my battleships that are behind at the A cap to um, move towards the B cap, especially behind that island, to just defend it. Like that's what we really want, we want to just sit there and defend. Because the defending side has the advantage. Um, we're already ahead, we just need to get more ahead. And uh, all we need for that is time. We don't need to do crazy things. Although we are probably gonna kill the Tirpitz, although I, we might lose the Hagura for it. But the Tirpitz is probably going to die. Not the one straight ahead, I meant the one that's north, uh, that the Tashkent is hunting. I, I wanted to initially, you know, have my input, but, you know... I'm not as fast as them and uh, my guns at such ranges aren't as good and I don't have as much range and all that stuff. I told this Cleveland that he shouldn't push like that because he's going to die as a result but he did it anyway. I guess, I mean, if he wants to die, that's his problem. I mean, he's doing decent damage on the Tirpitz, maybe we'll even kill it, so that's good enough, I think. Basically what we just need to do is um, sit behind, like where the battleship behind me right now is, that's about as far as the battleship should go. And while the Cleveland died and the Tirpitz died, I guess that's good enough. Uh, the battleship should stay behind there and just shell, and uh, the DD should be in, the f in front, like where I am right now more or less. At least as long as they have smoke screens available. Right now actually, if you think about it, um, both sides have lost two battleships, two cruisers and one destroyer, so in terms of fighting strength, we are actually rather equal. Okay, so I spot the enemy Benson. Um, unfortunately, she spots me as well, but I'm still gonna open fire because I got the slight advantage. Uh, well, I was the one opening fire first. And by the way, when people say that um, maybe expert marksman isn't as great than USDDs. Well, I mean, rotating your guns is still important. Because, uh, well, if you can rotate your guns fast or quickly, you could fire in that situation. Also, I'm gonna start going full speed to increase the size of the smoke screen. Because I want a large smoke screen so I am able to, uh, you know, maneuver inside that smoke screen and have less of a chance of uh, torpedoes randomly coming to hit me. Sadly, that uh, North Carolina is too far away for me to hit with torpedoes, but there is a Benson close by, so I guess I'll just try shelling her. And the Tashkent... No, sorry, it's the Tirpitz that's spotting. The Tirpitz in a position that I would not recommend him to go to. I like where the other guys on my team are, the two cruisers and the two battleships at the back. But the Tirpitz does spot the Benson, so I guess it's not uh, a complete loss. Um, at this point we just have them attack into us, although we're gonna lose the Tirpitz, we still have the positional advantage. So I'm repositioning myself, because I'm behind the smoke it's okay even if I fire my guns, although planes could spot me because planes can spot through obstacles. Which is a bit annoying, but it's great if you have the planes that are spotting. 
Also, I, I really wanted my uh, ship to be turned around. So I guess it would be great if we could get rid of the battleship, I mean, destroyers. I'm gonna torpedo on the Fusa. Our Tirpitz is so very dead. And I'm gonna shell. Usually you don't want to shell the target you uh, torpedoed, but uh, I don't have anything else really in range. That's a good target. Also, a fire would be great, so that he wouldn't have a damage control party available for the eventual torpedoes that might hit him. Okay, and now that the North Carolina is a target, I mean, in range instead, I'll stop shooting the tirpits. Also, the smoke screens are disappearing, so I guess I'm gonna stop shooting in general because I don't want to be target number one. So I'm gonna just chill here. Oh, the Tashkent used the smoke screen. I guess I can go use his ones. Also, these torpedoes are so very on point. Well, oh, and the Fus didn't actually die to that, but the flooding is probably gonna end him. Although the Fusa is actually using heal right now. So she is definitely gaining HP, but I think she already used her Damacon, so um, that flooding might take quite... Actually, is she even flooding? That's a good question. But because I'm gonna go be inside the smoke in a moment anyway, I might as well just shell the Fusa. And because I started firing a moment before I got into the smoke, I think I got like one extra cell off. Um, by the way, the way I'm firing is um, I select the target and then I move... Oh, I got a fire! That one's gonna stick, definitely. I select the target and then I hold down the right mouse button for free loop. Free loop. That's how I can spin my mouse around and not be accurate on where my mouse is while I keep shelling. Uh, this does decrease your aim a bit, like you're not aiming every shot anymore, so, uh, you know, overall your aim is less accurate, so it's not ideal, but it's great to pay attention to what's going on. I mostly use this on USDDs, because you, sh you have to fire all the time, and to be honest, what you should- Oh, I got the Fusa kill. Excellent. Fire paid off. Um, what you should be doing uh, on a Fusa is also smoke it disappears. And there's Benson, so I ping it out for my team. Fortunately, um, that guy died. Fighting power-wise, it's still rather equal, although actually they have a tiny bit more firepower. I'm gonna torpedo once I get a tiny bit closer to that North Carolina. I'm gonna torpedo in front of the island, like where his... Uh, Mark is a little bit because I think she might turn a bit closer and thus be able to get a bit uh, further, I mean closer I guess again. I, but yeah, I have smoke available so I guess I'm gonna just pop it, slow down, pop it and then just start shelling. <clears throat> I like using free look because what you should be doing is you should be spamming essentially your left mouse button because you want the shots to be fired immediately when they are ready, otherwise you're, you know, wasting it. Also, because of the changes with visibility, um, I can keep moving at 1 fourth speed forward and uh, while the smoke is going on and I will not get out of the smoke. Oh, and the game actually ended before the torpedoes even had a chance to uh, do their work. But I mean, essentially, we played this match according to our plan, like it was pretty handbook. We went for the A cap, then the B cap, took it, held it, and well, that was the game. Although there were some silly things done by our teammates, but overall it went well. Although, let's look at the... <laughs> wow. I guess if you look at the experience gained, I might have done a bit more than some of my other teammates, but... I mean, if we're fair, they are still very necessary, because... Uh, a lot of my XP is obviously capping, although I guess I did deal a hundred thousand damage in a uh, Benson. And I didn't even die, so I didn't even need a torpedo suicide. So now for the commander skills and modules. Uh, first of all I use all premium consumables, uh, smoke, speed boost and damage control party, although if I had to see how I would use uh, defensive fire I think. So uh, first slot main armaments, I mean 
Essentially the one that makes guns break less and torpedo turrets. Uh, second one I use the dispersion module because none of the other ones really make sense. Third one I don't want my steering gears broken and the fourth one I want uh, the acceleration module because uh, this helps me speed up faster. Um, and uh, I mean eventually the maneuverability is good enough and then the last one is the concealment module. If I had the sea hull I would probably use defensive fire and the sea hull because it increases my maneuverability and uh, I do lose a gun though. So commander skills, uh, basic firing training, last stand superintendent, su survivability expert and concealment expert. And that's essentially it. But anyways, um, I would like to thank my patrons and Patreon for supporting the channel. I don't know if you guys are annoyed by me reading out the name, so I'll try doing it a bit less. So I'll just pick a random name and um, I'll pick the first one, Akatakun. Thanks for your continued support. So anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, then um, please subscribe and thanks for watching.